guys welcome back to my channel so like I said last week like I promised last week we're gonna be talking about my first campaign ever with d and I'm super excited to talk about it with you guys thank you so much for some of the snake suggestions and the comments I was super into that um, I ended up going with and this was kind of inspired by one of your comments actually but I ended up going with frostbite because he is a white snake so I thought it was clever. So if you want to hear an in-depth look about my first campaign as a first time D&D player, then keep on watching, hit that like button, perhaps subscribe if you want to see more, and let's get started. So like I said in my last video, which I definitely will link, link, <laughs> I'll throw up somewhere if you want to see like what my character is and all her stats and all that, but I really didn't know what to expect when it came to playing D&D. &D. Um, even when people described it to me, it's just one of those things where it's just different once you're playing it. So the game took place an hour away. There was three of us, obviously I know the other two, and they've both played before. And then there were four people whose place we were going to. And so I've never met them before, but they were all super, super cool. Three of them played, one of them was the GM. So for our campaign, we each got little um, like half marbles in various colors to represent our characters. Actually, one of my friends brought his own little like Pokemon figurine <laughs> to represent. I can't remember what he is. I didn't recognize it. Um, I know he was a rogue, but I didn't recognize what his race was, but I think it's some sort of elf. Yeah, so I'm definitely on the hunt for some sort of figurine. It would be cool if it looked like her, but it'd also be cool if it was like a little snake. I don't know. Anyway, here's the, the campaign. We, the travelers, the adventurers, stopped in this town that was completely made of wood. And it's also like an in-between town. So it's mostly filled with inns and it's touristy almost and super profitable. There is a guy who... Honestly, I don't remember why he hated the town so much. I think something about like not getting enough money, not profiting enough from it. And 10 years ago, he bombed one of the buildings and then was sentenced away for life. And then he escaped the night before us adventurers arrived. And so we were hired by the town as basically firefighters. There was this card that had these riddles on it that were numbered. So the first one would be like, this is the place you would least likely suspect a fire to happen. Something like that it was much more poetic than that, but it was basically like trying to clue you into the next location or the next building that he was going to set on fire. On this map, there was like 40 different buildings. So we had to use those clues and try to get to the location to put out the fire before it happened or usually as it happened. We weren't very good at that. I think we put out a total of two out of the seven fires or something like that. We were terrible. The last clue was finding like where his final location was and a lot of the game was fighting off his henchmen and just figuring out how to freaking kill them and we killed the main bad guy and then we were done so for me i think one of the most surprising takeaways from it was and again i have nothing to base this off of no prior experience or even like basic understanding of like what a typical game is but i thought it was very structured because to me an unstructured game would be like oh you're put in a you're put in a field now what? Like to me, that's what I imagine an unstructured game would be. But this was very like, if we went on track even a little bit, it would be like, oh, uh, explosion happened at building 23. And then we would all go to building 23 and like save people or something. So to me, I found it to be very structured, but my friends who I drove back home with, who've played various campaigns, we're both talking about how extremely unstructured it was. And like my friend gave me the example of like a lot of campaigns, the GM will be like, you go and talk to the head of the town. Where she, this time she was like, she was like, you reached the entrance of the town. What do you want to do? And so it could have been an option that we would just like not go in the town. I mean, that could have been an option, but it also felt like that wasn't really an option. I guess we had a lot more freedom within the game than maybe I realized, but I don't know. 
I should have had better track of exactly what everyone was. One was like a goblin, I think a really, really strong goblin or an ogre of sorts, but he was like hyper strong. He was kind of our hitman. And then my friend whose race I can't remember, but I think they could cast spells, it, but it started with a T like a trifling, something like that. And he and the other girl playing, they were the same race. She was also, she wasn't a rogue, but she was super into stealing things. And then my other friend who came with us, he was a warlock and, <laughs> or no one realized this until the game was almost over, but he was like two foot five or something, which is super cute. And then the other person, you know what? I don't remember what he was at all. I'm not sure he ever, he ever told us. This was his first time playing too, so he was very, very quiet throughout the entire thing, which I understand because I definitely kind of took a step back because I just kind of wanted to see how does one play, how does one get into the dynamics of all of it. So something that was really fun that happened during the campaign, hello, you can't see, but my wolf has entered, has joined us, was that a building had caught on fire and we get there and she was like, oh, there's people inside, what do you do? My friend runs in there and finds out there's like a little kid to save. And the girl who's also, again, I don't think a rogue, but she just constantly wanted to steal things. She goes in there and she saves this old woman. And she's like, before I leave, <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pillage this place and see what I can find, which I thought was hilarious. And I love those little moments where you can go off script and off mission and just kind of play into your, your, what's up? He just gets so needy. Anyway, but where you can kind of play into your, what makes your character special. And that's something that I definitely had a lot of fun with. My snake, Frostbite, is freaking awesome because he can go like something ridiculous like 30 miles away from me so at one point it was like the bad guy's getting away and i was like i'm gonna send frostbite after him and they're like oh he still got away it's like i'm just gonna keep sending him <laughs> and it's like as long as it's within 30 miles he will get you basically during the fight i was able to use him several times and basically like I, there's no penalty from it, at least not, not that I found anyway. Also during the battle sequence, so the bad guy, he was able to hex regular civilians into being his henchmen. So yes, we did kill some innocent people. We probably should have, should have known better, but they were coming at us. So like, what can you do? And during that entire round, cause it took like five rounds for us to kill the henchmen to even attempt to get to the bad guy it took forever but i just kept using frostbite and it was great <laughs> there's just no penalty on him and maybe there will be in future p campaigns but from this battle like he would either get the henchmen or he wouldn't but he would never like get hurt and even if he did i also have a spell to heal wounds so i was able to heal up some of my fellow players who got hurt during the battle and i'm assuming if frostbite ever got hurt that i could easily just kind of like bleep blop bloop i'll fix yeah it was great because then i didn't have to move myself any closer i didn't have to put myself in the line of danger i could just go and try to kill the guy <laughs> Um, I also did kind of a douchey thing. So afterwards, the bad guy was killed rather unceremoniously. He tried to steal our fire wagon. So we had this wagon pulled by horses that was filled with magical water. So simply by saying geyser or stream or whatever, you can just command the water to gush or stream out. It was magical water. And so the bad guy tried to steal our little fire truck. And then the guy who was playing the goblin, who was the one controlling the fire truck, was just like, geyser, 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 stream, geyser. And basically just drowned him. And then the horses trampled over him. And anyways, woman who may or may not be a rogue and my friend who's definitely a rogue went down and wanted to like pickpocket him where they found some really cool items. And one of them was a necklace that could, what could it do? 
I want to say like teleport you, but I'm not entirely sure, but it has some sort of special ability with it. I went up to my friend and I was like, with my vampiric gaze, I'm going to take the necklace you just stole from you. And uh, I did. And then afterwards he was like, you could have just asked me and I would have given it to you. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. That was super douchey. I just wanted to to try it out and see if it worked and it did and it was kind of cool but it was super douchey thing to do because we are friends don't do that ladies and gents i mean i guess you could if you wanted to be a douchebag but if you don't want to be a douchebag don't do that our next campaign is in two weeks so i'm pretty excited for about that we all level up i'm going to be looking out for like a little figurine or something to use for my characters start to get a little bit more official i'm hoping that the more we play the more oh my god personalized these missions will become i i don't know exactly but i'm excited about it i had a lot of fun it was a good time and i definitely just after that one round feel a lot more comfortable about speaking up commanding my character to do certain things even if they're off script i think becoming comfortable with your abilities or spells or the items that you own is like half the battle too because you probably own something that could be really useful in certain situations like my friend and i were discussing it afterwards oh there are all these different things that i could have done with my abilities to that could have change the game or whatever you're just so in the moment and a little bit overwhelmed but yeah next time i already feel way more comfortable like i said we already leveled up so i think everyone is at level two i think some people already started at level two but now we're all at level two super excited about it and if you guys like this video and you want to hear more about my thoughts on DD, my future campaigns my characters just whatever uh leave a comment down below i absolutely love discussions with you guys it's one of my favorite parts of my day i constantly check the youtube stats app to see who's commenting and i just i just really love it it's definitely my favorite part of putting out videos keep on commenting and uh subscribe if you'd like and i will see you guys next time bye